Railways are a great way of moving things around, be it people, freight, or the post. Most railways run a mix of passenger trains and goods trains on the same tracks, but some railway lines are built exclusively for certain types of traffic, such as the slate mine railways of Wales or the logging railways of America and Australia. There was also once a railway built entirely to run a slightly more macabre type of railway service. In the 1850s, London was facing a weird crisis. The population of the city had rapidly increased from just under a million people to almost 2.5 million in the span of 50 years. And as a result, the 300 acres of graveyard space spread around the city was at full capacity. By 1842, an investigation showed that it was nearly impossible to dig a new grave without cutting through an existing one. People were either being buried on top of each other or simply dug up for someone else's body to be put in the grave. An the outbreak of cholera in 1848 ended up killing an additional 14,600 people, whose bodies were left stacked in heaps while graves were being dug up for them to be put in. On top of this, the amount of rotting corpses was starting to contaminate the water supply, further spreading disease. Something had to be done, and so a proposal was put forward by Sir Richard Brown and Richard Spire to purchase a large plot of land to be used as a graveyard 23 miles away from London to house the dead. The graveyard would also be far enough away from London that it would be out of the range of the city's projected growth. It was to be called Brookwood Cemetery and had enough space to accommodate 5,830,500 graves in a single layer. Of course, being so far away from London, there needed to be a way for the dead to be moved to the graveyard. This is where the idea got interesting. The London and South Western Railway had a line that passed the gravesite, and so it was proposed that a train service could carry the bodies and mourners to the burial site quickly cheaply and easily. The LSWR was concerned about what impact a funeral train would have on other railway services, but eventually promised the usage of one train per day. The Bishop of London at the time hated the idea of funeral trains as it felt it demeaned the dignity of the deceased, as those who were respected members of their communities would be carried alongside those who had led immoral lives to the site. On top of that, he naturally felt that a railway was incompatible with the solemnity of a Christian burial service. Eventually, the plan was passed by Parliament and the London Necropolis and National Mausoleum Company, or the LNC, was formed. After some discussion and consideration, the cemetery was divided into two sections by a road, one cemetery being serviced by the Southern Station for members of the Church of England and the other serviced by the Northern Station for nonconformists and members of other religions. The trains themselves were also separated, not only by class but by religion as well, to help prevent any upset caused by two conflicting backgrounds sharing the same compartment while grieving. The carriages were designed to accommodate all classes and beliefs, with the only real difference between them being the ornamentation on the doors. Fares were set for a fair price and never really raised with inflation, meaning it eventually became cheaper over time. The train only ran if there was a coffin or passengers waiting to use it. If there was only a single second or third class coffin waiting to be transported, the train would postpone its run until the next service. By 1900, Sunday train services were discontinued and from 1902, daily trains no longer ran and the service was only used when required. The railway was also used to help relocate some of London's other burial grounds during civil engineering projects and to help ease the congestion. The line travelling through the graveyard had to be constantly maintained as the poor quality of the soil, the reason the land was so cheap to buy in the first place, would rapidly deteriorate the wooden sleepers that the track laid on, meaning they had to be constantly replaced. Aside from that, the railway had little in the way of faults or accidents, simply running as a quiet little railway from London to Brookwood. When the line first first opened, trains were mostly pulled by any engine the LSWR had to spare, but by the 1930s, Southern Rail had the route mostly worked by the M7 class tank engines formerly belonging to the LSWR. Most commonly though, it was engine number 255 pulling most of the trains. The original London terminus for the railway was demolished in 1902 to help expand the Waterloo line that ran above the station, but was moved to a different location. The line saw a steady decline in traffic as Southern Rail was running more frequent trains to Brookwood Station, but it wasn't until the Necropolis Station was bombed in 1941 that it truly became irrelevant. A deal was made between the LNC and Southern Rail in 1946 whereby Southern Rail would take over funeral trains to Brookwood while the LNC sold off their old station, but held the rights to limit the number of funeral parties on any given train. This deal was soon made obsolete after Southern Rail became part of British Railways after nationalisation in 1947. New operating procedures meant coffins had to be carried separately 
from other cargo, lack of adequate rolling stock, lack of use, and the constant need to replace the graveyard track sleepers simply led British Rail to stop running the funeral services. Transportation of coffins and funeral parties by road soon took over, and the railway through the graveyard also no longer served a use. The stations in the graveyard were either abandoned or knocked down, and the line was eventually pulled up, with a short section of track and a plaque remaining to mark the site. All in all, the London Necropolis Railway was an interesting solution to a problem that lasted roughly 80 years. It was never exactly the spooky express that only the dead travel on, like some others call it, but it was a very interesting solution to the problem faced at the time that we'd never really get to see nowadays. If only it was still around today. I know there are many train enthusiasts that would have proudly boasted they would indeed ride until they died. Subscribe for more.